Hello and welcome once again to this uh, video channel. Over the course of the last year or so, I've had quite a few inquiries about NFED half-wave antennas because it's a subject which is very dear to my heart. I've used NFED half-wave for quite a while now and uh, published a number of videos and there's a number of questions that uh, crop up about NFED half-waves. The NFED halfway antenna is a cracking antenna. It's a very simple antenna to erect. And it's very unfussy about how you install it, provided you obey some fairly basic rules. It's an ideal newcomer's antenna. A newcomer that's got a transceiver wants to get on the HF bands with a minimum of fuss and know that he's going to get some good results right from the start. So I've covered, uh, as I say, this antenna over quite a few years now, but in the course of it, I've been asked many questions. And there's about 10 basic questions that keep repeating themselves. So I thought in this video, what I would do is I'd try and cover these 10 or so basic questions. And hopefully it'll answer a lot of the queries that you have asked in the past and those that are likely to ask them in the future. I've got about 10 questions here that uh, pop up regularly. I'm not going to deal with them in any particular order, I'll just deal with them as they come up one by one. Well, I suppose the most obvious question is what is an end fed half wave? Well, it's a half wave length of wire. But instead of like a conventional dipole feeding it in the middle, breaking it and feeding it in the middle where you've got a 50 ohm low impedance, we feed it at the end because at the end it's got a very high impedance. Now there's no good connecting current's cable directly to it because it'd be a complete mismatch. So in order to connect 50 ohm coax cable to something which has got around about 3,500 ohms high impedance at the end, we have to have a transformer or an unun. And the most common one is a 49 to 1 ratio unun. No need to worry about uh, what it is and how it works. You do need a 49 to 1 unun. And that's inserted between the coax cable and the end of the wire. And then you get a very good match. And the reason that we talk about an NFED half wave as being a nice antenna is because it has the function and uh, the functionality of working on its harmonics so if let's start on 40 meters a, a half wave length of wire on 40 meters is 20 meters so we have 20 meters of wire we connect the unun at one end and then the coax cable my antenna is resonant on the 40 meter band but it's also resonant on the second harmonic which is the 20 meter band it's resonant on the third harmonic, which is the 21 megahertz or 15 meter band. And would you believe it, it's also resonant on the fourth harmonic, which is the 10 meter band. And in fact, it's resonant on every harmonic. Likewise, if you're fortunate enough to have a long garden and you want to get on 80 meters, you need a 40 meter length of wire. And that will get you on 40 meters, 20 meters, uh, 15 meters and 10 meters. And with a bit of luck, it might also get you on 17 and 12 meters but let's concentrate on the most popular one the 20 meter half wave length of wire 20 meters gives you 40 20 15 and 10. it's that simple a length of wire down the garden now when it comes to actually me measuring out the length of wire it's important to note that when we talk about the 40 the 20 and the 15 meter band these are approximations well, we're going to stick with the 40 meter fundamental half wave, which is 20 meters long or approximately 20 meters long. And I'll just put up on the screen here the exact length for 7.1 megahertz, which uh, I recommend you adjust the antenna to, which I'll cover in a minute. And uh, you'll see there that uh, it's not quite exactly uh, 20 meters long. And that will fit into a lot of gardens. And again, if it doesn't fit, we'll, co we'll cover that as well. But one thing that happens is when you connect an unun to an infed half wave, it actually lowers its frequency. So if you follow the links I've put up on the screen here and then check the VSWR, you may well find that you need to shorten the antenna slightly in order to get that VSWR down to a level that enables you to operate, for example, in the center of the band. 
And the very uh, easy way of adjusting the length is not to cut it, but just to fold it back a bit. Fold it back, uh, I don't know, five centimeters, 10 centimeters, just to see what happens. It should improve the VSWR. If it doesn't, then you need to lengthen it. So it's always best to have a little bit more than you expect and then just fold it back. And if you fold it back, it's almost the same as cutting, not quite, but it's almost the same as cutting it. And once you you establish the exact length, you can then just trim off the end. There you are, you've got your antenna. Now, if you, it's important to adjust the antenna on the lowest band. And bear in mind you're dealing with harmonics. So if you, for example, let's say you um, trim your antenna for 7.1 megahertz, and that's okay on 40 meters. It will be 14.2 megahertz on the 20 meter band, which is okay for 20 meters. It would be, what would it be? 21.3 megahertz on 15 meters, not bad actually. And on 10 meters, it would be 28.4. So yes, if, you, if we start off with 7.1 megahertz, that's gonna place you pretty well placed in all the other bands. But do remember, you must be prepared to adjust the antenna because the antenna will be slightly loaded by that and probably a little bit too long, but better to be too long than too short. So in summary, you're going to have a length of wire 20 meters long, approximately, with a 49 to 1 anun, and that antenna will cover 40, 20, 15 and 10 meters. What additional coil, you might say? Well, on a number of commercial designs, you may have noticed that there's a small coil very near the feed point of the antenna, in other words, very near the point where you add the 49 to 1 anun. And it's about two centimetres diameter and about four or five turns. Why is it there? Well, when you deal with harmonics on the NFED half wave, those harmonics slightly increase so that if we have 7.1 megahertz, the harmonic, next harmonic of 14.2, it's not quite 14.2, it's 14.2 and a bit. And it's really of no consequence until you get to 10 meters and you find that what actually happens is that the fourth harmonic on 10 meters, which should be 28.4, maybe something like 28.6 or 28.7, this small coil has the effect of lowering the higher frequencies, particularly the 10 meter band, and, tr and tries to bring it back down to a perfect harmonic of 28.4. Do you need it? Well, frankly, I've never bothered. You can try it if you want to. It's very easy to put a coil in, wind it, and then take it out. So you need about two centimeters of diameter coil with about five turns of the wire on, on it, in other words, the, the antenna wire, and uh, see how you get on, but uh, I've never bothered. Can I run additional bands you, with the NFED half-wave? Well, there is one trick that you can use, which is very, very popular, and that is to add the 80 meter band. At the moment, we've been talking about an antenna that is 20 meters long, give or take, and it covers the 40, 20, and 15, and 10 meter bands, four bands. Well, if you add a coil and you need a, um, uh, let me think, it's, uh, I think it's 110, microhenries, 110 microhenry uh, coil on the end, I'll just show you here, you add the coil on the end and then add a piece of wire probably around about two meters long to bring it to resonance. That will add the 80 meter band. Now I have done a video on that um, and I will at the bottom of this uh, current video put a link so you can see that video. So yes you can add 80 meters to it that uh, is quite a popular way, and it's very useful if you've got a small garden. The band width on the 80 meters won't be terribly great, but you'll certainly move around the phone band okay. And um, if you use the ATU in your transceiver, if you've got an ATU built in your transceiver, you'll probably find you can cover most of the 80 meter band. So it's a nice, it's a nice little trick. Can I add more than one NFED halfway? In other words, parallel two up rather like parallel dipoles. Unfortunately, no, you can't. Whilst it works with dipoles that are center fed, it doesn't work with end fed antennas. And the reason is that as soon as you tap an extra bit of wire onto that anun, you're effectively loading the main aerial. And 
the end of a half-wave dipole is very, very sensitive. As soon as you put another one in parallel, you're completely detuned the whole thing. So it's a nice idea, but no, it doesn't work, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Now, one of the most popular or the most regular questions is, do I need a counterpoise? <laughs> It comes up time and time and time again. In short, no, you don't need a counterpoise. Um, and there's, there, are, there are a lot of people that will tell you you need a counterpoise because that's what they believe, because they're going back to the days when we had random lengths of wire and a counterpoise basically um, helped the antenna. We're dealing here with a resonant antenna, and no, you don't need a counterpoise, but, but, you do need something on the end from the anun to the radio. But you only need a very small amount of wire. And uh, Moxon, uh, uh, G6XN, I think it's G6XN, Les Moxon? I think it's Les Moxon. Anyway, the Moxon, who is very famous for his antenna work back in the 50s and 60s, and 70s, I believe, um, he showed and I'm not going to go into any detail here, but he showed that you need approximately 0.05 of a wavelength of wire between the anun and the transceiver. And that, of course, is more than covered by even the shortest length of uh, coax cable. I think 0.05 of a wavelength on 20 metres is, what, one metre, is it? Something like that. So even on 40 metres, you only need a couple of metres of wire, and that's taken care of by the feeder. But no, you don't need... A counterpoise, I've tried it, it makes no difference at all. And those that say you do need a counterpoise probably can't explain why they just think you need a counterpoise. So you don't need a counterpoise on a half wave dipole, so why would you need a counterpoise on an infed half wave? So no, you don't, and if you try it, you give it give it a whirl, but you won't notice any difference. What is the radiation pattern? Well, the radiation pattern of the antenna is very similar to a conventional half-wave dipole on the lowest frequency. And as you add, uh, as you go up in frequency, so the pattern will start to break up into a clover leaf. And it, it's but very, it's almost the same as a conventional dipole. There is a slight skew. There's a slight skew in the direction of the run of the antenna. Um, going away from the feed point. So if you are um, running your antenna um, east-west and you're feeding it um, at the, on the east end, uh, so that it's pointing sort of east-west, um, there will be a slight skew towards the, uh, towards the end, in other words, towards the western end of the antenna. It's not great, but it is there. It probably won't be noticeable in practice. Anyway, Here's some patterns taken from the ARRL antenna handbook dated 1980, would you believe, yeah? This shows the patterns for a half wave dipole, two half waves, three half waves, and four half waves. So in other words, patterns for 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. How high should my end fed half wave be? Well, it's an interesting question. Basically, we're talking about a dipole here. We just happen to be feeding it at the end. So the rules about height um, are exactly the same for a center fed dipole as it is for an end fed half wave. The higher, the better, within reason. But many of us can't get the antenna up to the ideal height. I mean, we, we often talk about the ideal height as being a half wave above ground. Um, it's not sort of written in stone, but half wave above ground gives you a decent angle of radiation. Clearly on 40 meters, that's gonna be a struggle for many people. Um, even 20 meters is a little bit of a challenge in a small garden, but it doesn't actually matter that much in terms of will it work or won't it work? You know, you can actually erect an infed half wave about two or three meters above the ground. It will still work. It'll predominantly be high angle radiation, but you'll get contacts, you'll get signals. 
and uh, sometimes uh, you, you'll get some really good results with low antennas. So the height is not important in terms of will it or won't it work, but it is important in terms of the angle of radiation. But, you know, we're in amateur radio, we're not professionals. Put it at the height you can get it at. Don't be frightened because you think it's too low and it won't work. Yes, it will work. It won't work as well as a higher dipole, but there will be occasions when the low antenna will actually give you better signals than the higher one because of the propagation, particularly high angle propagation. So there is no critical height for the half, NFED half wave. And if you can only get it along the top of a fence, which is two or three meters high, give it a whirl. Yes, it will give you results. And I suppose the final question is, can I bend it? Yes, you can. You know, the NFET half wave is remarkably um, acceptable to being bent around gardens. There's many uh, guys that have written to me about uh, the results they've got and they can't fit 20 meter length of wire in their garden, um, but they can, they can do it if they can bend it around the garden. And it really doesn't matter that much. It will certainly muck up the radiation pattern, the polar, polar diagram. But does that really matter if you can get on the air and make it work and have contacts? So the answer is yes, you can bend the antenna. Um, you could, for example, you could take it down the garden and then take it across the garden at the bottom, or you could take it and invert it and up in the air and, and, and across as horizontal, because you can feed an infrared half wave at ground level as an inverted L. In other words, you, you, you put the transformer about a half meter above the ground, run the wire as high as you like, say you, you run it up to a uh, six or seven meters, and then run it down the garden. And if need be, you can drop the far end down as well. So. Yes, you can bend the antenna. Never be frightened of bending an antenna. Don't be, com don't be sort of swayed by people who say, oh, well, it won't work if you bend it. Yes, it will work. Um, it, it'll work. It may not work quite in the same way as it would in a straight line, but who cares? You know, we're in amateur radio. We're not professionals. And amateur radio is a bit of a challenge very often, particularly with antennas. So don't be frightened of bending that antenna. You may have to adjust the length a bit to, to compensate, as indeed when you lower antenna, you will usually need to shorten it slightly to get it back on tune. But you know, who cares? It's all part of the fun of amateur radio. So I think I've, well, I know I've covered the main questions that I keep getting asked, and I hope that it's given you hope that if you didn't think you could get an infrared half wave in your garden and you weren't sure what happened if you bent it and etc. etc. Um, it's a great antenna. It's a great antenna for beginners, as I think I said at the beginning of this video. It'll get you on the air, it will work, and you will be pleasantly surprised. And don't be swayed by people who say it won't work or it's going to cause all sorts of problems. It will work, and it doesn't cause problems that I know of at all. No more than any other antenna will cause problems. So give it a whirl, enjoy yourself, it's a great introduction to ham radio, as well as a great antenna to start in ham radio. You'll have a lot of fun with it, and uh, I, I hope you uh, got some benefit from this video. And as usual, thank you very much for your support on this channel. Don't forget to press the subscribe button, and as usual, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.